Well, during this uh, past week, one of the things I did is I, um, I went and saw the new Spider-Man movie. Wasn't that, uh, that was good to do, wasn't it? And, um, you know, I grew up reading the Spider-Man comic books. So I went to see the movie, and it was fun, fun movie. And it made me think that um, how much, you know, America, we love our superheroes, don't we? We love our superheroes. If you don't still, your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, they love their superheroes. And um, we have to admit that they, they have some pretty cool costumes. And um, Spider-Man <clears throat> has one of my favorite costumes, so I enjoyed that. But you know this uh, modern day theme and, um, and emphasis on action heroes, you know, these epic heroes who, that are on the powerful side of good and right, they're strong and they stand up for justice, they don't back down, and they always make the right moves. It's a theme in all the superhero movies. Whether you grew up or still like Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or you watch Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, there is this theme of the uh, hero winning the battle over the evil forces of this world. <clears throat> now, in our passage today, Paul is reminding us that we as Christians, that we as believers in Jesus, are in the midst of a much greater cosmic, spiritual contest as well. And we sang about onward Christian soldiers. We sang about a mighty fortress is our God. And it is the same theme that these hymn writers are thinking of, I believe, as they write these great hymns. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to begin a series this day, continuing our theme of discipleship. And as you as disciples learn those disciplines that we've been talking about, praying, reading scripture, sharing your faith, fellowshipping with believers, as you go deeper, as we just finished talking about, another important aspect, characteristic of the disciple of Jesus is that we're aware that we are in a great cosmic battle with Christ to usher in God's kingdom. And the only way that we can prepare to win this battle is on our knees through prayer. And Paul says we must put on the armor of God. And so for the next weeks, we'll look at the armor of God. But today, I want us to do a little intro on that of why we need to put on the armor of God. So Ephesians chapter 6, I'm going to begin reading with the 10th verse. <clears throat> Paul says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. This is the word of the Lord this week. Well, Paul says several things here that I think we need to keep reminding ourselves of. First is, evil and the evil one 
is real in this world. Evil and the evil one is real, alive, and active in the world we live. Paul says there in verse 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Paul reminds us that that the real spiritual battle resides in the evil and Satan, and he reminds us who this battle is really against. And I think the reason he does this, and we need to hear the same word today, is that we can get distracted by smaller spiritual battles or even less important church battles and forget the real great war we're engaged in as the kingdom of God. You know, we can get very engrossed in worrying about the church budget, the church building. We can worry about if our feelings got hurt last week. We can worry about what our neighbors are up to. And we can let these things overtake us so much that we forget that there is a real eternal cosmic war being raged for the souls of men and women all around us. And when we compare these little battles to the large war, it's one subtle way that the evil one distracts us from doing what God really wants us to be doing. It's like the battlefield. I've never been on the battlefield. Some of you have. I've read history of battles and wars. And it seems like, you know, many of the front line soldiers who are on the front, who are in the trenches, they don't know the entire strategy of the war, do they? They don't know the entire big picture of the total battle or even where this is leading to win a large war. But they do fight harder. They do fight with more passion if they realize that their small part on that day is vitally important to the larger scheme. They leave the big strategy up to the generals, those who are planning, but they trust that they know what they're doing. It's the same with, with we as church. God has a larger battle plan, doesn't he? God has a larger scheme. God knows who we're really fighting against. God knows when all of this will come to culmination and an end, and when God, because of Jesus Christ, will be victorious. But until that day comes, we are soldiers of the cross. Until that day comes, we're giving our marching orders. And our marching orders are to resist the evil forces, to resist those things that block us, that detour us from sharing the gospel with all those around us. And what happens is we become lulled and dulled and fooled that evil doesn't even exist in our world, and that evil is opposed to the loving message of God. Uh, one way is, let's go back to our superhero movies, our superhero books, our superhero storylines that's so prevalent in our culture today. Uh, one story, uh, they, they tell us that evil forces are really something fictitious. Their evil is so powerful and so misunderstood that we invent fictitious characters to overcome fictitious evil powers so that we can defeat them. You know, we, we hear in our movies that evil really only exists in a galaxy far, far away. Evil is only really in the form of monsters and creatures from another planet that only the Avengers can battle. 
that evil only exists in the future in unseen worlds and that we have to have these magical people of the Lord of the Rings trilogy to fight and that's the only way that we can defeat evil <clears throat> but don't be fooled Paul says the Roman world had their Roman gods and their Greek gods didn't they that battled up in the heavens he says don't be fooled the evil and forces of evil are right here in your midst. You don't have to read a comic book or go to the movies to find it. We wage a daily, monthly, yearly battle for the kingdom of God. Paul is sharing with us. And so what are we to do? Well, Paul says that our ultimate goal is when we're assailed by the evil of this world, we are to be able to stand firm as believers against these demonic forces. We're to be able, when the battle is done, your little battles in your life, when you feel attacked by evil, when we're attacked as a church of Jesus Christ by evil, that when that battle clears and the smoke leaves the battlefield, we're still standing firm as believers in Jesus Christ and the church of Christ. In fact, Paul says there in verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then in verse 13, put on the full armor of God so that when the evil, the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, we're to be able to be able to remain standing. We're to be strong in the Lord when evil comes. And we can be strong enough to overcome this evil because the Lord is with us, the Bible teaches us. And the Lord is with us, Paul says, in his mighty power. Our God is more powerful than anything. We are to prepare ourselves so that we can stand our ground when evil assails us. We need to win these spiritual battles so that we can share the gospel message. We need to win these spiritual battles so others may come to know Christ as Savior. We need to stand and keep standing so we can continue to carry on the work of Jesus as we take care of the poor as we take care of the broken, as we stand up for the marginalized in our society and culture, and that we care about the lost when no one else cares for them. And winning these battles takes preparation. If we're not prepared when evil enters your world, you probably are going to be very um, hard-pressed to win the battle. Winning the battle over evil is going to make us stronger each and every time and allow us to remain standing. And which one among us doesn't desire to be strong? We want to be strong in our faith. We want to be strong in our life. We want to have resolve in our values and our principles. Most of us wish we had more inner strength. We, we wish that we have the strength to preserve against all difficult odds. We want the strength to be able to tough it out. The strength not only to survive, but to prosper when difficult things come into our life. Because I think each, inside each of one of us dwells a small child, an insecure, uncertain child. And that inner child still believes that, that we're weak and we're fundamentally powerless. And what that child wouldn't give for just a little strength, more physical strength, more emotional strength, strength that, that projects to others a sense of authority and confidence and be able to have uh, an answer for the difficult things that are swirling around and among us. And those answers come from God. 
those answers come from our values as Christian brothers and sisters. We stand firm in ourselves. We stand firm for God and his work, Paul says, by putting on the armor of God. Then Paul goes on to tell us how we can have this power, that it's from the Lord, how we must prepare ourselves for the everyday victories and the everyday struggles of this life, how we can successfully fight and win these battles over the forces of evil, of Satan, of temptation. Now it's beginning to sound almost like an action-adventure movie, isn't it? But each of us, we don't have capes or fancy suits. We have the spiritual armor of God to go into battle with. But this battle is real. Paul says the way we prepare ourselves uh, is putting on this armor. And, you know, most scholars say that that Paul receives this great illustration, this great image, because as he writes Ephesians, he writes it from the prison cell, doesn't he? And in that prison cell, he's guarded and sometimes chained to a Roman soldier, a private uh, in the army. And that soldier has to wear his full armor every day because he's on duty. He wears his uniform. And Paul, day after day, week after week, looks at this soldier. And somehow he's able to take his miserable situation and apply this great eternal spiritual truth. I've often said that if that uh, soldier was not a believer, he probably had a miserable time with Paul, because I bet Paul talked about Jesus every day to him. And my guess is, I hope he came to know the Lord. But as he looks at this soldier and he thinks about this armor, there's a couple of big things about the armor of God before we look at each piece individually. The armor of God is, is mostly defensive in nature, isn't it? It's preparing to defend ourselves in this battle against the wiliness, the, seduct the seductiveness, the power of the evil one. And we are to be ready to defend ourselves so after these evil trials, we're stronger and we can still do something for the Lord. And so all of the armor, the, the breastplate and the belt and, and even the shoes and the helmet, they're defensive in nature. Now, there's only one piece of armor that's an offensive weapon, and that's the sword of the Spirit. The sword is used for offense and to finally win the battle, and we'll talk about that. And we are to put on, just like that Roman soldier, and keep on the armor at all the times, and we're to stay well ahead of when the enemy attacks us. And so how do we do that? How do we constantly, like that Roman soldier, have this armor on all the time, being prepared for this attack? Well, the only way is that we put the armor on through prayer. The only way to win the battle against the evil forces is on our knees, asking God to be there for us and strengthening only by maintaining an ongoing conversation, an ongoing listening time to the Almighty God can we expect to be ready to stand against evil when it comes. Because many times we don't know when it comes, do we? It's an ambush. It's all of a sudden. And we don't expect it. And if we're not ready through prayer, will never be able to battle and win it. So over the next several weeks, we'll look at the armor of God, piece by piece, how it helps us stand firm against evil, and how it helps us to remain standing for God. So I encourage you to begin 
this week getting ready by extending your prayer time. If you pray for five minutes a day, increase it to 10. If it's 30 minutes, increase it to 35. And pray and look at Ephesians 6 and, and begin to, to pray on the armor of God so that you may walk in his power and might. And as these weeks go on, we, we can look at, at what that armor entails and, and how you can more specifically pray to God that you may put that armor on. That we as individuals and we as Fairview Church will be able to stand and be a great witness for the Lord God. Now, one re great reminder that Christ gives us and leaves for us about his might and how he has already really won this victory, defeated evil, if we just trust him and put on this spiritual armor. He has already done the work for us on the cross, has he? He has defeated evil. He's defeated sin. He's even defeated what some of us think are our worst enemy that we can never avoid or overcome, and that is death. And he does this because he is the Son of God and that he alone can make this sacrifice. And he tells us to remember this often in communion. He says, and I think that's one reason we need to remember it. We need to eat of the bread, his body, drink of the cup, his blood, to remind us that he has fought this battle for us. And a mighty fortress is our God. And so this morning, we are going to partake in communion together. We're going to remember again uh, why Jesus came, what Jesus did for us, and that we leave here in the strength of our Savior.